dropping bombs, I was firing rockets, I was firing guns at targets uh, on the ground. Armies and navies around the world are investing more and more in air power. Yeah. Every time you see an aeroplane perform, there's a little blood rush, uh, you know. I could, uh, have been the, there. I could have been there. 60% of Indian Air Force is Russian, 10% mm -hmm. is uh, Israeli. Died uh, either during the war, or immediately after the war, doing some flight testing. Most of them died very young. And in this book, there is one Indian heiress. In the realm of national security, air power is a pivotal element. The ability to control the airspace, strategic bombing, and aerial transport are very critical in military strategies. That is why it is essential to understand air power in the ever-evolving dynamics of global security. I had the privilege to interview Air Marshal Anil Chopra, a distinguished Indian Air Force officer, and currently the Director General of Center for Air Power Studies, which is a think tank. With an illustrious career in the Indian Armed Force, Sir brings with him a wealth of experience and insights. Stay tuned for my conversation with Air Marshal Anil Chopra. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Shivam. Uh, always a pleasure interacting with you. And uh, you ha you're going to have a great uh, platform uh, for the youth uh, about military, about the Air Force, Air Power, mm -hmm. and on very many other subjects. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, to begin with, I would like to understand from you, where does your passion for flying comes from? Because flying is a, is a career especially for the Air Force, that you need to be really passionate about. Where does it come from, sir? Yeah, you know, uh, all the young people, uh, when they are growing up, especially in critical years uh, between 10 and 15 years, uh, you know, you're all the time seeing the world, you're looking at role models, you're seeing adventurous activities that are going on around you, right. and you start having initial shaping of the mind uh, as to what uh, do you want to be in life. And many people get uh, very impressed as young people looking at the military people because they are in uniform, they are very disciplined, they carry themselves very well. And among the military people, then you have your other inputs that uh, give you an idea as to you want to, uh, you know, be a flyer, you want to go into the deep seas or you want to become a military man in a tank or in holding a gun and being in action. So, if you meet a large number of very successful people in other fields, including people like uh, President Abdul Kalam and many industrialists that I know, when they were young, they all wanted to join the military. Mm -hmm. And it, it so happened, somebody had some small uh, medical problem related to the eye or some other uh, thing and some of them couldn't join the military and they went into other professions and they did extremely well. So, starting point is around 10 to 15 years age and I must tell you, what happened with me, I uh, belong to a small uh, town uh, and um, uh, from a middle class family and my, uh, you know, father was looking for good education for me and a scenic school came up uh, in uh, my hometown, Kaputhala in Punjab and uh, I uh, was put in that school for good education, not to join military. And, uh, but in the school, when I saw these people in uniform, I was very impressed. And specifically aviation, because 1965 war was fought over Punjab, mm -hmm. uh, parts of Punjab. And we saw some dog fights happening in there. And that is uh, where I uh, got very excited. And I thought uh, aviation is very interesting. And then I started reading about aviation, started seeing videos, some of the Indian movies that were made on uh, aviation. And that's how I uh, fell in love with the flying. Yes. Beautiful. So, like you said, there's always, when you're growing up, there's always the churning of your mind to be what you want to become. Similarly, I wanted to become a fighter pilot as well. Ah. So, you were a fighter pilot, sir. Do you want to share your experience as a fighter pilot and maybe your favorite fleet, uh, your favorite fleet to fly as well? Yeah. See, I, I must tell you, when I was a, a young boy, I was not very intelligent. I, 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 was, I was intelligent, but not hardworking enough. And with the result, I was not getting good marks. But... Uh, Around uh, class 9 and 10, I, I think some switch got turned in my head and all of a sudden I started doing well in academics. But the real change took place in National Defense Academy uh, where uh, I became very clear on this aviation part. And um, I started doing, uh, when I first time got into the air in a glider in NDA, uh, I must tell you that I flew even the very first time pretty beautifully. My instructor was very impressed. He said to me after the flight, he's a young man, you look like a born flyer. 
basically flying is about motor skills because you have to you know it's a three dimensional uh, movement and therefore you have to uh, you know have good motor skills so that is uh, the first thing that happened and then i did very well i i uh, went for the trophy checks and when finally when i got commissioned at the age of 20 years 6 uh, months i had won all the flying related trophies uh, at the time of my commissioning so i knew that okay i am here but i must tell you uh, it's a great feeling to be a fighter pilot at the age of 20 years and 6 months uh, i was not only flying a fighter jet i was uh, uh, dropping bombs i was firing rockets i was firing guns at targets uh, on the ground uh, it, it is different and you know mind you the aircraft are very expensive uh, uh, if i was to say that in today's time a fighter jet like the rafal uh, costs uh, cl close to 7 800 crores yes. uh, that's one hell of a uh, real estate in which uh, a single pilot is sitting on and imagine a squadron commander who's a young wing commander or a group captain nowadays uh, he has uh, 18 aircraft under him not many corporates uh, uh, have got such assets uh, 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 yeah. uh, compared to a uh, fighter CO and the fighter flying is uh, it's got many dimensions you know you the way, way you maneuver the aircraft you at high G's you do aerobatics you do air combat one versus one two yeah. versus one two versus two multiple formations large packages we could, could be as much as 30 40 aircraft in a package mm -hmm. you know so it, it, the fight of flying is uh, very different uh, and uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, level of excitement uh, that uh, of, of fighter flying gives you uh, is out out of the world right. it, it is something which uh, uh, you know i can uh, speak for hours about mm -hmm. you know so so it, it's it's fantastic yeah beautiful sir yeah i'm going to transition from your, your personal experience to our nation's capability now sir yeah. so would you like to share uh, the importance of uh, air power in today's time in, in tri uh, military forces like you know there's army air force and navy what is the importance of being powerful in in the aerospace specter of national yeah. security you know, uh, aviation began in uh, 1903, even first uh, heavier than uh, air platform got airborne. Mm -hmm. uh, within a few years, by 1911, uh, the uh, aeroplanes were being used for military. Uh, the First World War saw big action from the air, mm -hmm. uh, dropping bombs, reconnaissance, uh, air combat, all kinds of exercises took place in uh, uh, the first world war and between the first and second world war a huge transition in the type of aeroplanes their performance the accuracies their reach and of course in second world war we all know about uh, air actions like the battle of britain uh, we, we we know you know, how uh, mass bombing raids took place thousand thousand aircraft air power has come a long way since then right. and today you know, if you see all the major wars that have, whether it's Korea, which was Vietnam, whether it's uh, Arab-Israeli wars, whether it was the Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and now in Ukraine and Russia. in uh, Israel-Hamas war, air power is being used. Uh, see how the Israelis uh, did three weeks of continuous bombing before they started little, little incursion from the ground. After more than a month now, only is the ground forces moving. Same thing happened in Iraq. So, uh, air power is very important. You know, it first shapes the military environment. Mm -hmm. It shapes the ground environment for your ground campaign to be able to start. Okay. The second thing that happens with the, uh, you know, air power is, uh, after having shaped high precision, you know, today you have uh, many of these... Uh, Hamas uh, leaders, you, know, you can call them terrorists or militants, uh, they have been knocked off from the air. You know, you know, we all know that uh, uh, Osama bin Laden was picked up from the air. Yeah. We did an air campaign to pick, uh, 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 pull him out. So air has got many dimensions. Uh, Capability-wise, uh, I think, uh, of course, I do not want to undermine that there is a requirement for great army, the requirement for great uh, navy. But if you see uh, armies and navies around the world are investing more and more in air power. Yeah. They are going in with UAVs, with drones, 
uh, attack helicopters, the Navy wants more aircraft carriers. So everybody is looking at air power because air power is uh, not only giving you a vantage point but has effects which directly show up on the ground. Yeah, so air power is important and um, uh, 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 more and more people are now clubbing air and space as single domain True. because uh, the thin line dividing air and space is, uh, uh, you know, disappearing. More and more platforms, weapons are transiting from uh, the, uh, uh, you know, atmosphere into exactly. space and then reappearing back into atmosphere and etc. So there is a, a lot of action. Uh, air power will continue to be, uh, you know, uh, gain importance in times to come. And as I said that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the armies are wanting to have fixed wing aircraft, they want to have attack helicopters, they, they are already having large number of utility helicopters. So there is, uh, you know, action uh, uh, air power for everybody. Yeah. So what you are saying is uh, national's military strategy. Uh, Air, airspace is important sector now. Undoubtedly. Now yeah. that we speak, speak about a national capability, what would you say India is standing at the moment and how can we improve in our air, air power, air sector? You know, firstly, uh, you know that we are already the fifth largest economy. We will soon be the third largest economy uh, in the last 10-15 uh, uh, years. The country could afford uh, more funds for the defence. The defence uh, sector budgets uh, have been going up 10 to 12 percent in the last couple of years. This uh, money is important because then only you can buy and get capability. Not today, Indian Air Force is uh, the fourth largest Air Force in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in size, but also in quality. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a fully networked, uh, you know, combat uh, capability. Uh, we are uh, having global reach, uh, both for transport aircraft, our fighter aircrafts, all including the LCA are air refuelable. Uh, and therefore, they can, uh, you know, have much larger reach. We have demonstrated in Indian Air Force, uh, uh, you know, long missions, 10, 10 hours missions in Bay of Bengal, right up to the uh, Malacca Strait. We have also done it in the Arabian Sea, right up to Gulf of Aden and Gulf of Hormuz. And we have covered uh, most of the northern uh, Indian Ocean. So, the Air Force is uh, uh, building up reach in both in uh, terms of strike capability. Uh, we are trying to dominate this whole area. Uh, and um, I, I think uh, uh, a lot of action is unfolding, yes. Right. So, I, if, if I recall right, you were flying a Mirage, uh, what's it, Mirage? 2000, yes. 2000, sir. Yes. Now, there, there must be some technological advancement as well. There must be new yeah. fleets. Is there any particular plane that you would like to fly now as a, as a yeah. retired uh, air marshal? Yeah, you know, I must tell you that uh, at any given time, uh, there, there, are, there are some aeroplanes which are the top of the line, state of the art uh, aeroplanes uh, because of their performance, their avionics, their capability to carry weapons, their capability to do accurate strikes, to be able to uh, do combat and shoot down the enemy aircraft, etc. So, those capabilities. So, when I was a young pilot, MiG 21 was the aeroplane to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, in 73, when I got commissioned and I finally went to MiG 21s. Uh, you know, that was a big thing and uh, there was uh, all the pilots were looking, oh, where will I go? Mm -hmm. So, MiG-21. Subsequently, more modern aeroplanes came. I was very lucky to be among the first eight pilots who trained in France on Mirage 2000. I was also in the first formation of four aircraft which landed in India. They brought the Mirages from wow. you know, France. I love that aircraft because uh, I had flown it for mm -hmm. a long time. Even today, Mirage 2000 remains uh, the aircraft of choice. It was chosen for Balakot. It was the one which brought laurels to Indian Air Force in Kargil. So, Mirage 2000 fleet has done extremely well. The aircraft, um, uh, I have flown the MiG-29. I have been a test pilot. I was head of the uh, aircraft systems and testing establishment, which is the flight test center of the uh, Air Force and the premier organization of the country. And therefore, I got a chance to fly a large number of aircraft. I've flown a lot of sorties on the Su-30. Of course, I've also flown transport aircraft and helicopters, uh, but certainly uh, the more modern aircraft. Now, Mirage 2000, after, after an upgrade, the gap between Mirage and the Rafale has reduced considerably. Of course, the Rafale is the latest aircraft. It's uh, aerodynamic design. It's, uh, 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 you know, weapon carriage capability, the electronic warfare package, the radar, the, uh, you know, semi-stealth features. Many, many things in Rafale are absolutely outstanding. and. Uh, any youngster today, if I was to be a youngster again, I would be wanting to fly the Rafale, yes, of course. So, would, yeah. would you say you miss flying 
at, at present as well. You miss the the adrenaline rush that you used to get while flying. Yeah, see, undoubtedly, you know, I tell you, every time I go and watch uh, a, a display, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during the Air Force Day or some events, uh, special events that we uh, do all around the country for the children and uh, youths to, you know, get uh, excited about the air power. Every time you see an aeroplane perform, there's a little blood rush, uh, you know. I could uh, have been there. The, uh, I could have been there. And um, we look back with pride. You know, I keep telling the youth of this country that, you know, you must love the profession you are in mm -hmm. or get to the profession you love, you know. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, very important. Uh, I feel blessed. You know, if somebody asked me at the end of my life that what would I like to be in my next life, uh, I'd say a fighter pilot. Now, why? If you can say this to yourself after you retire, uh, that means you had a good life. Beautiful. You lived well, you lived the life which you enjoyed. You know, one must remember that now in 24 hours, you know, you're eight to nine hours or 10 hours at work and some amount you sleep and then some you spend with the family or entertain or look, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. If those eight, 10 hours, which are your prime time of your 24 hours, mm -hmm. if you're not only uh, doing a job, you're also loving it and enjoying it. Right. I think this is a fantastic that thing. Is. And um, I can say, uh, you know, that uh, flying is something out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that the young people, they get more excited with the jobs which have greater risks. I, I love the guys who do skydiving. You know, people who, uh, you know, f do free falls mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, and then open the parachute at a late stage. I like the guys who go deep sea Diverse. They are all. They, 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 there is risk, but there is excitement in uh, uh, such jobs. Same is true for fight or flight. It's absolutely great fun. Uh, other than requiring high levels of professionalism to be a fighter pilot. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So. Yeah. What nation would you say at present holds the the strongest air, air power? Undoubtedly, it's the Americans. Yes. I will tell you the reason. You know, see, their defense budget is uh, close to seven. 770 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Their defense budget is more than the next 15 countries put together. Yeah. Or, oh, you know, China is around 277 billion, India is around 70 billion, and uh, the Russians and everybody is around 50, 60 billion, and there's countries going down. In this world, the countries which possess knowledge, mm -hmm. they rule. You know, remember that for Two, three hundred years, the Europeans rule the world. Why? Because industrial revolution happened there. That means knowledge. In the last century, the Americans ruled because of knowledge, technology, uh, you know, uh, original uh, research. Mm -hmm. So this is how the countries rule. And look back now, till about uh, five centuries back or four centuries back, and before that, India was a superpower mm -hmm. uh, because of knowledge. Right. Because we, in, uh, you know, whether it was mathematics, whether it's medicine, whether it's aerospace, the Vimana of the old, India has been repository of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I do believe that one, you must spend money, mm -hmm. surely, but spend what? On research. Right. You must have your own patents. You must have uh, products and equipments of, uh, with intellectual property rights. Right. This Atam Nirbhata, which has been going on for the last 8-10 years, mm -hmm. uh, uh, more aggressively, uh, is to get your position back in being able to design, to manufacture and then operate, you know, uh, these platforms. And uh, Atam Nirbhata pays maximum returns in aerospace. Why? First, Aerospace technologies are the leading edge technologies. Mm -hmm. They require much higher levels of technology for aerospace platforms. Second, uh, obsolescence in uh, aerospace platforms sets in earlier. That means you require faster replacement. Of course, they are very expensive. In all these three counts, it's important for any country, when you're looking at Atam Nirbhata, that uh, you concentrate more on aerospace. Mm -hmm. That is why our flagship programs in the country today, LCA, right. AMCA, the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, the other flagship, they are getting the highest investments in the country. 
They're getting the highest orders. Indian Air Force has already ordered more than 200 LCA Mark 1 and 1 Ace. Mm -hmm. we, and we, we, we're going to order more than 200 uh, LCA Mark 2. So, uh, aerospace investment uh, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Atam Nirbhata is key. We've seen in Ukraine, we've seen in Israel war. We are already getting affected because they are two important sources of defense. Uh, equipment was 60 percent of Indian Air Force is Russian, 10 mm -hmm. percent is uh, Israeli. Oh, that's significant. And if these supplies were not to come in time because of their own constraints, right. because there is a war going on, absolutely, the Atam Nirpata has become very, very, very important. We all have written about uh, the impact of this. Yeah. So you're saying it's important to be self-reliant in terms of the technology and research and development primarily. Absolutely. And manufacturing. You know, there are critical metals. Mm -hmm. There are uh, some uh, me uh, metals which we are still importing. As the naval chief the other day said, you know, there are three aspects to, uh, you know, indigenization of a ship. Mm -hmm. One is to keep it afloat. That means the hull. Are we getting the metals? For long, we were importing metals even for the hull. But luckily, now we are nearly at 90% stage that everything to keep the ship afloat. The second is to move. That means the engine, the the propeller, the shaft of the propeller and uh, the uh, elect electric system, etc. That itself, we are around still 50% stage of Atam Nirpata in that. And the third is to be able to fight. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, the avionics, the weapons, the where we are still uh, a little more distance to cover. Uh, are you understanding? Yes. Same is true in aviation and in tanks defense and various well. defense sector. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we have to identify areas, first look at the low hanging fruit and then go for the Absolutely. bigger kill. Yes. So you're saying there's a lot to learn from the United States. So I was reading a fact, tell me if, it's, if that's yeah. the right uh, yeah. fact or yeah. not, that the number one air force in the world is by the US and the number two is by the US as well for, for the Navy. Yes. Is correct. that correct? Sir? Absolutely. You see, US Navy has got 11, uh, 12 aircraft carriers at any given time, 11 are away. Well, that's huge. And the aircraft carriers, uh, mostly all of them are nuclear part. That means once it sets sails, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to come back for refueling, doesn't require diesel or of course, some other, uh, you know, uh, logistics support they require. But, so they are huge. Nobody. I mean, the Chinese have got uh, the third aircraft carrier just coming. Much smaller. The number of aeroplanes it can take is very little compared to the Americans. American aircraft carriers can take uh, 100 aircraft. Uh, uh, you know, the huge heavy ones. So, th there is a big difference between the Americans and the others as far as... Uh, uh, air power is concerned in US uh, Navy, as you rightly said, if you have 11 aircraft carriers with uh, about 100 aircraft, 1100 aircraft are there, that's more than Indian Air Force so in size. So, so there is uh, undoubtedly the Americans, uh, uh, it's also because uh, they can uh, invest so much more money. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and I understand that, you know, I can go on with my questions today, yeah. but I know we are short on time. Yes. So, I'm going to finish up our conversation with three personal questions, if you allow me. Yeah. First of all, sir, you've got a beautiful uh, set of books behind you, sir. Yes. And I see <laughs> one really special book here, which is The Greatest Air Ace of All Time. Yes. yes which this, is uh, published yeah. by Penting Press as well. Yeah, yeah. This is the one. Yes. Correct. Would you like to speak something about the book, sir? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, the idea about, uh, see, uh, we as young pilots uh, have been reading a lot about uh, the air races. Mm -hmm. Air race is a person who has shot more than five aircraft in the air. So yes. that's an air race. And there were a large number of air races starting in First World War, but certainly bulk of it, uh, of them were in Second World War, mostly Germans, because Germans had uh, lesser pilots, uh, lesser aircraft, but much... Uh, uh, they are they, uh, having war in many fronts. When you read the uh, life stories of these guys, Red Baron, famous uh, 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 person, Ristofan, uh, 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 you know, of uh, the First World War, mm -hmm. he, he was a, uh, not only a national hero, he became a hero of the world mm -hmm. uh, because uh, of the way he flew and uh, Many of these air uh, aces, they were great pilots. They had in, uh, uh, developed new tactics. Uh, they had shot up many aircraft, but most of them got shot up themselves right. uh, and uh, uh, died either during the war, immediately after the war, doing some flight testing. 
most of them died very young and in this book there is one indian heiress mm -hmm. yeah uh, so lal roy who was uh, you know uh, in uh, first world war in a period of 3 months shot 10 aircraft mm -hmm. and uh, he got shot himself and he died uh, at a very young age in fact he is the only indian uh, uh, air ace in the world wow. ever you know indralal roy the, uh, remains a legend for us but there are many other air races in this book uh, whose story i think uh, young men uh, pilots uh, aviators uh, they need to read about yes it must be really inspiring to for you someone like you to read about these stories yeah, right? because you know to select 25 was not mm -hmm. easy was it you know because there are hundreds of air races mm -hmm. to select those 25 uh, i i took few months to you know read up and identify who are the people who are going to be in my book yes yeah nice yeah. yes. so second uh, question i would like to ask you which is a personal question as well is is there a particular book you wish you would have read earlier in life see book reading unfortunately uh, for few years because of uh, you know heavy dose of social media mm -hmm. you did the, the, the total time available for individuals when we were young book reading was the thing to do and mm -hmm. all the time you know you were reading whether if it was a novel or a series uh, i personally was very fond of reading history military history because i thought you know there's so much to learn from past campaigns uh, reading about great heroes great leaders their leadership skills so i greatly enjoyed reading but in between uh, you know the last 15 20 years the book reading culture has oh, no. slowed down a little uh, which i'm not very happy about and i think uh, uh, that uh, this will come back again because more and more people want to feel Uh, you know paper they want to turn you know the leaves of a book and then uh, read because th th that pleasure is absolutely different yes there were many books uh, which uh, i uh, you know had not read uh, in my younger days mostly uh, related to some other uh, military campaigns mm -hmm. and i am very happy that uh, since i became director general uh, caps uh, i'm not only doing a lot of writing uh, but i'm also doing uh, a, a lot of reading uh, and there are some outstanding books continuing to be uh, published uh, every day yeah beautiful yeah. so yeah uh, to end our conversation i would like you to tell me about any uh, advice you would give to your younger self so there is so much uh, we want to tell the young people and i think it's important for us uh, uh, you know uh, who have become senior citizens uh, and have got uh, great experience of in life Uh, to continue to talk so i do a lot of television or youtube interactions uh, uh, to motivate the youth uh, mm -hmm. as i said you know uh, you must love your uh, profession that was uh, uh, you know one very important uh, uh, aspect in life you know there are two words which i have been uh, trying to emphasize which i have applied to my own life and uh, uh, these two words i think are critical one is passion mm -hmm. and second is enthusiasm Right. means have passion for something you know even if you want to play a saxophone for example or you want to uh, get into motorcycle riding or you want to go to treks in the hills you have to have passion for whatever you want to do certainly uh, you must have passion for the uh, you know uh, profession that you are in and wow. second is enthusiasm because after you have a passion and thereafter if you don't work on it enthusiastically you cannot succeed so i uh, strongly feel of these two words which i at a very young age i imbibed passion and enthusiasm and wow. that is how uh, i am where i am uh, you know uh, having flown 45 different types of aeroplanes in the service uh, uh, achieved whatever uh, you know uh, in service and uh, continue to do mm -hmm. uh, even today and i have a you know 850 published articles as of today and all done in last in 11 years so that is the it's all because of passion and enthusiasm yes. yeah yeah so yeah. beautifully said sir yeah. this conversation with you has been so enlightening for me i'm sure it's going to be same for the audience as well yeah. so to end the conversation since pending press is say uh, been 25 years and you got we you published with us very recently as well so would you like to share your experience and maybe a few words about us and how we yeah you know pentagon press uh, I, i got associated with them uh, about 6 uh, years back uh, i have uh, written for them for their yearbook uh, my first book uh, 
which was on China's aerospace. My power was uh, done by uh, Pentagon Press. My second book, The Greatest Air Races, was also done by Pentagon Press. It's one of the top uh, publishing houses and I'm so happy because once they transited uh, to the uh, defense and strategy related uh, books, uh, they have done outstanding job. I believe they have got more than 800 uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, books, uh, book titles that have been published uh, till today and the speed at which they are going. They are, uh, you know, I, I get invited for uh, some book release uh, function every other day. So that's the rate at which uh, these people are churning out books. And uh, I am ha happy, Shivam, that you are going to be the next generation uh, taking over the mantle of this uh, great publishing house. Uh, I wish you all the very best and uh, I am sure you will uh, bring in some more uh, youthful dynamism uh, into the exercise which is already doing extremely well, the organization and uh, uh, will you, uh, I wish you all the very best. Thank yes. you so much Thank for your you. kind words, sir. Yes. And I really appreciate for, for your support today. Uh, this has been beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Until then, keep reimagining yourself and know that the power of change lies within you.